Lincoln Memorial in Washington, D.C., United States of America. The Lincoln Memorial is an American national memorial built to honor the 16th President of the United States, Abraham Lincoln. It is located on the western end of the National Mall in Washington, D.C., across from the Washington Monument. The architect was Henry Bacon, the designer of the primary statue to Abraham Lincoln, 1922 was Daniel Chester French, the Lincoln statue was carved by the Picciarelli brothers, and the painter of the interior murals was Jules Guerin. Dedicated in May 1922, it is one of several memorials built to honor an American president. It has always been a major tourist attraction and since the 1930s has been a symbolic center focused on race relations. The building is in the form of a Greek Doric temple and contains a large seated sculpture of Abraham Lincoln and inscriptions of two well-known speeches by Lincoln, the Gettysburg Address and his second inaugural address. The memorial has been the site of many famous speeches, including Martin Luther King Jr.'s I Have a Dream speech, delivered on August 28, 1963, during the rally at the end of the March on Washington for Jobs and Freedom. Like other monuments on the National Mall to including the nearby Vietnam Veterans Memorial, Korean War Veterans Memorial, and National World War II Memorial to the Memorial is administered by the National Park Service under its National Mall and Memorial Parks Group. It has been listed on the National Register of Historic Places since October 15, 1966, and was ranked 7th on the American Institute of Architects 2007 list of America's favorite architecture. The memorial is open to the public 24 hours a day, and more than 7 million people visit it annually. The exterior of the memorial echoes a classic Greek temple and features Yule marble quarried from Colorado. The structure measures 189.7 by 118.5 feet and is 99 feet tall. It is surrounded by a peristyle of 36 fluted Doric columns, one for each of the 36 states in the Union at the time of Lincoln's death, and two columns in antis at the entrance behind the colonnade. The columns stand 44 feet tall with a base diameter of 7.5 feet. Each column is built from 12 drums including the capital. The columns, like the exterior walls and facades, are inclined slightly toward the building's interior. This is to compensate for perspective distortions which would otherwise make the memorial appear to bulge out at the top when compared with the bottom, a common feature of ancient Greek architecture. The memorial's interior is divided into three chambers by two rows of four ionic columns, each 50 feet tall and 5.5 feet across at their base. The central chamber, housing the statue of Lincoln, is 60 feet wide, 74 feet deep, and 60 feet high. The north and south chambers display carved inscriptions of Lincoln's second inaugural address and his Gettysburg address. Bordering these inscriptions are pilasters ornamented with fasces, eagles, and wreaths. The inscriptions and adjoining ornamentation are by Evelyn Beatrice Longman. Below the memorial is an undercroft. Due to water seeping through the calcium carbonate within the marble, over time stalactites and stalagmites have formed within the undercroft. During the 1970s and 1980s, there were regular tours of the undercroft. The tours stopped abruptly in 1989 after a visitor noticed asbestos and notified the National Park Service. For the memorial's centennial in 2022, the undercroft is planned to be open to visitors following a rehabilitation project funded by David Rubenstein. Lying between the north and south chambers of the open-air memorial is the Central Hall, which contains the large solitary figure of Abraham Lincoln sitting in contemplation. Its sculptor, Daniel Chester French, supervised the Picciarelli brothers in its construction, and it took four years to complete. The 175 short ton statue, carved from Georgia white marble, was shipped in 28 pieces. Originally intended to be only 10 feet tall, on further consideration the sculpture was enlarged to 19 feet from head to foot. 
If Lincoln were depicted standing he would be 28 feet tall. The widest span of the statue corresponds to its height, and it rests upon an oblong pedestal of Tennessee marble 10 feet high, 16 feet wide, and 17 feet deep. Directly beneath this lies a platform of Tennessee marble about 34.5 feet long, 28 feet wide, and 6.5 inches high. Lincoln's arms rest on representations of Roman fasces, a subtle touch that associates the statue with the Augustan theme of the Washington Mall. The statue is discreetly bordered by two pilasters, one on each side. Between these pilasters, and above Lincoln's head, is engraved an epitaph of Lincoln by royal cortices. The memorial has become a symbolically sacred venue especially for the civil rights movement. In 1939, the Daughters of the American Revolution refused to allow the African-American contralto Marian Anderson to perform before an integrated audience at the organization's Constitution Hall. At the suggestion of Eleanor Roosevelt, the wife of President Franklin D. Roosevelt, Harold L. Ickes, the Secretary of the Interior, arranged for a performance on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial on Easter Sunday of that year to a live audience of 75,000 and a nationwide radio audience. At the memorial on May 9, 1970, President Richard Nixon had a middle-of-the-night impromptu, brief meeting with protesters who, just days after the Kent State shootings, were preparing to march against the Vietnam War. As one of the most prominent American monuments, the Lincoln Memorial is often featured in books, films, and television shows that take place in Washington. By 2003 it had appeared in over 60 films, and in 2009, Mark S. Reinhardt compiled some short sketches of dozens of uses of the memorial in film and television. Like us and join us at Extreme Collections for more fun and knowledge.